Radiotherapy has been used for a great many years to destroy the inner lining of veins. And one of the problems has been is it's incredibly effective to kill very, very thin walled veins because the solution when it's injected into the veins kills the inner layer of cells. The trouble is, is many people have tried to make it work in bigger veins. This, the problem isn't the size of the veins, it's the thickness of the walls. So the bigger the vein is, the thicker the wall. And if you inject liquid sclerotherapy into a big lumen vein, firstly, the sclerosant itself can't penetrate through all the layers of the wall and therefore doesn't kill the vein, but merely kills the inner lining, and that causes thrombus. And the second thing is the sclerosant material just mixes with the blood, causing thrombus, or sometimes called sclerothrombus. And so therefore, if we lose it, use it, uh, sclerotherapy in veins that are too large, all that ends up happening is we get a clotted off vein that's never going to disappear. The trouble with short-term studies, and we see a lot of these, is that people who use short-term sclerotherapy or foam sclerotherapy say that they've had success because the vein is now not p passing any blood. But that doesn't mean to say the vein's closed. It merely means to say, in a lot of these cases, that there's thrombus there. And once that thrombus resolves, the vein reopens. Therefore, we can't trust short-term study studies with scler sclerotherapy. One of the advances of sclerotherapy to get rid of one of these problems is to make it into a foam. If we inject liquid sclerotherapy into a 1, 2 or 3 millimetre vein, it quite often can't get enough of the blood out to cause just an interaction between the sclerosant itself and the vein wall. It's fine for thread veins and half millimetre veins. So when we're talking about these slightly larger calibre veins, what we can do is we can make the scler sclerotherapy or the sclerosant into a foam by mixing it with a gas. Now, the Tessari method made by Professor Tessari over in uh, Italy is w the most widely used uh, method, and it mixes a one unit of scler sclerosin, usually one mil, with four units or four mils of gas. Now, what we know is we shouldn't use air anymore, because if we use air, the nitrogen in the air can go through the system through a patent uh, foramen ovale or hole in the heart, and therefore we can get uh, cerebral emboli from that, which take a long time to dissolve. So all good sclerotherapy now is used making using combinations of carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide and oxygen as the carrier gas. We use carbon dioxide and oxygen because carbon dioxide alone with the sclerosant tends to cause very small bubbles that don't work quite as well. Now when this foam is injected into a vein, it pushes the blood physically out, so we've got more chance of the sclerosant killing the vein wall, but also then penetrating through the vein wall as deeply as possible, um, but without causing thrombus. Of course, the foam only lasts for about 90 seconds, and so once the foam has been injected, it's essential to bind the leg, and we use a special uh, pad to put over the top of the vein, and then we bind it firmly down onto the leg, causing eccentric compression and holding the vein wall together. It then takes 14 days and nights for that vein wall to fibrose completely. If the pressure is released at any time in that 14 days and nights, blood will come back into that dead vein and we'll end up with the same thrombus that we didn't want to have in the first place. And the patient will get open veins in the long term, but more importantly, thrombophlebitis with red followed by brown stains in that area. And that's really a disaster. One of the other things about foam sclerotherapy, apart from injecting it under ultrasound control so we know it's in the right place, and also injecting it with a carrier gas without nitrogen in it, so we must be carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide and oxygen. The other most important thing is it mustn't be used in veins that are over about four millimeters. There are multiple studies now that show that the thickness of the vein wall makes it impossible to get a good closure in the majority of cases once we get into large veins about six millimeters or more. And there's several multi-center studies and meta-analyses about now that show that if we try to use foam sclerotherapy in these large veins over six millimeters, the three-year uh, follow-up of these I would get very very bad results and so therefore although there's a lot of pressure in the media and also from uh, companies trying to keep costs down or maybe expertise of using lasers uh, to a minimum it actually is a very short-term way of treating veins and shouldn't be used in large veins certainly not the ones over six millimeters 
our protocol is very much that we use liquid sclerotherapy for veins up to about one millimeter then foam sclerotherapy from about one millimeter through to three millimeters maximum four millimeters and that's at rest and dilated once one gets over five millimeters we should be looking for other techniques uh, if they're long and straight veins a thermo ablation if they're not we then have think of things of maybe coil embolization in the pelvis or phlebectomies but foam sclerotherapy has worse and worse results the larger the diameter of the vein is.